Yeah, earlier this year, I think it was this year, we did a seminar on two, three different strategies on handling your accounting, and strategy number one was to hire a full-time or part-time bookkeeper. Strategy number two was outsourced to the CPA firm, and number three was to do your own accounting in-house. I'm constantly meeting with people trying to uh, figure out which method is best because uh, no matter which method you keep, ultimately it comes down to the people involved. So I saw a business yesterday, and he uses the method of he's a small business. He has maybe five employees, revenue of 800000 and his method is he puts an ad on Craigslist for a bookkeeper. He hires the bookkeeper. Uh, he kind of supervises the bookkeeper. Uh, he happens to be in the business of software engineer. So he's kind of used to the computer, but he has to supervise the bookkeeper in order to uh, try to get the accounting done in-house. And then at the end of the year, he uses the accounting firm. And he complains about how he uses it. He hires the bookkeeper and he trains them, but then... After six months to a year, they leave. So he's back to uh, hiring another one. In our experience, this method is uh, it's, it's what people see, and there are exceptions to this. It only, our experience is it works about one or two out of ten, where you might get a part-time or full-time bookkeeper that actually stays with you. In any business, there's unique things. They're not all the same. So they need to learn the intricacies of uh, of the business, and then by the time they learn it, they leave, so he's off for the new one. I tried to convince him that he could either try uh, outsourcing the accounting firm, or there's actually a new concept out there which is called insourcing. Insourcing is where a business owner, in, in general, many of these, if you take an example business of a construction business, you have one person that runs the business, and one owner, and he might have an administrative person in-house. And other than that, he's got everybody out in the field on the projects. The method that's used is the uh, it's through the computer. What the people do is they fax any invoices, in the case of accounts payable, they fax it or email it to an address, and those bills come up on screen so that those bills go to, for example, North Dakota, and they come up on his screen, and he can see the bills. And then he merely, when he wants to pay it, he clicks. And he clicks, and then that bill-paying service uh, pays it, puts it in an envelope, pays the bills, or in many cases, after a while, pays it electronically. We happen to use this type of service in our CPA firm. Then the outside accounting firm can merely look up everything that's been paid online and if they code it correctly, all of this data can be downloaded into QuickBooks. So in this way, he's merely authorizing the payment, and all of the administrative tasks are done by the bill paying service, and the accounting firm has access to the uh, data online, and everything is available online, so the information is available, and it, it, it streamlines the... Uh, bill paying effort and it in general costs pennies the uh, the the cost for the bill paying service is in round numbers somebody would say a dollar a check and uh, if you were doing it yourself you'd pay 45 cents in postage so if they pay it electronically it's actually less than a dollar a check but this is a method that's not mentioned in our three methods but it's 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 becoming more and more available where people take their accounting department, in some cases, where they have one or two people, and say they're paying those people a hundred thousand a year, and they can use this insourcing method, and in many cases reduce their hundred thousand dollar accounting department to a half of that, and get everything and, and get the same items done. So we've done this with clients, and we've actually uh, made it better for them because they used to mail checks international, and now the and, and the people would have to wait, depending on what country they're in, they would wait uh, three, four weeks, and in many countries, they have difficulty cashing checks. So now we pay it electronically, so it's instant, and the peop the client authorizes those payments on screen and has access to the payments, can see what we paid, and all that information is available. 
So this is what we've done recently, and I think it's a method that um, many businesses should uh, consider. Paul, if I'm a business owner listening and maybe have considered changing accountants sometime during this year, what's their business advantage to doing something here in the fourth quarter as opposed to, say, waiting until the first of the year or after tax season? I mean, generally speaking, now, October, November, December, we get increased calls for people. In fact, yesterday I got two calls for individuals who want to come in to preliminary look at their taxes. They're both new to the area. They want to. They don't. They're not going to use the accounting firm they had before. They want to know what they can do before the end of the year. In the case of businesses, sometimes the results of operations could lag a little. Besides that, now that we're in the fourth quarter, you have more data. When you're in the first quarter, especially when businesses are seasonal, you know they don't know exactly where they stand. But in here at this company, we do tax planning in the fall because you have a full nine months, ten months of operations. So there's the majority of the year is gone. You know, you want to know where you stand. The accounting's got to be up to date. The when you have that data and you just have two months left, now you can predict where you're going to be. Whereas in the first quarter, you might not know for the year you're going to have a profit or loss or where you are. But now that nine or ten months are gone, we can assess where they are. They can put in a pension plan. They can. Uh, one of the things they can do that really helps them, actually, is that if they have profits, they don't want us to tell them in April they have a tax. We can we can see you can do items one, two, three in planning, and then after that there, we can tell them the balance due. Now they know about it. They can plan some things. They cannot get into a situation where they spent the money on other things, and then the tax comes and they're not prepared. So that's what we try to do now, and then then come January, February, March of next year, you're more concentrating on 2013. You're doing a budget for the year. You're getting set for 2013. You're not in a situation where you're in October of the following year and you just finished the previous year. You're in a situation of, you know, you're planning for 2013 because you know what happened in 2012, and that's what we try to get people to do. Paul, if there's um, somebody listening to this, uh, either on the replay or, or some other means, and they've been on the fence, um, you know, about making a change, but uh, suddenly after listening to this, they have an interest in talking to you. What, what's the best next step to take in way to get a hold of you? I mean, the best next step is to think about their situation. There's nothing to lose by ask getting a second opinion, and that's what we, we offer when we see people is a, is a second opinion. Sometimes I see people, they're in a good situation, they don't need to make a change, they're, they're getting proper, and we tell them so. Uh, in general, we work people on a long-term basis, so we don't take people away from good situations. What we try to do is tell them, look, this is where you stand, these are the items that you should be getting, and if they're not, then we give them a proposal and um, they can consider making the change. We receive calls all the time because we're pretty prominent on Google, and we meet with them. There's not a cost for the consultation, and we compare what they should be getting with their existing situation, and they would email or call me. Well, what's the best number and uh, best email to use to get a hold of you? My email is psullivan at esullivan.net. And my telephone number is 301-657-8080, extension 102.